G'day folks, Chris Nitto here with an Oz Cyclone Chasers current Aussie Cyclone update for the general public just to provide a little bit of closure about what's going on across the Australian tropics for you. Earlier today we saw the demise of this tropical low as it became vertically displaced so basically as you went up in the atmosphere part the center of the circulation in the upper level of the atmosphere was about two to three hundred kilometers away from the surface level circulation which was right over the top of darwin so uh, that's all she wrote for this one folks unless uh, it it does something miraculous we shouldn't be expecting this one to redevelop let's take a look quickly at the Last threat map that was issued by the Bureau of Meteorology in Western Australia. You can see the low pressure system right on that west coast of the Northern Territory. Expected to move into the Timor Sea. Look, it may encounter a period of intensification here as it goes through some nicer conditions in the environment. But overall, the expectation is that if it does develop somewhat, it will remain below tropical cyclone status as it skims the north coast of the Kimberley and then pushes further offshore into the uh, into the indian ocean you can still see on today's guidance already there or continue to see the fact that the circulation center has been displaced so there's the circulation at the surface right over the top of darwin city well it was during the daytime a little higher up in the atmosphere and the circulation center was located a bit further west a little higher up still in the atmosphere and the circulation center was located further west and a little higher up again and the circulation center was located a long way to the west of darwin and this is the problem with a tropical cyclone you need to get all of its circulation centers on top of each other uh, if it's going to have any chance of development at the moment we've got a, a circulation that has no head think of uh, think of it as a human trying to walk around with his legs and his head chopped off. You can't do it, can you? Exactly the same with a tropical cyclone. Now, if this was an extra tropical cyclone, this would be a perfect little environment, but it's not. It's a tropical cyclone. Tropical cyclones need to be vertically stacked. Vertical wind shear continues to remain high, particularly just north of the system. But if it does track here over the next 6 to six to 18 hours, or 6 to 24 hours, in fact, uh, you'll probably see the system undergo some limited vertical wind shear. And that's, uh, that's a good thing. That might allow it to vertically stack for a short period of time. And then the wind shear kicks in again, starting from around about Thursday. Look at this crazy amount of shear. This has just been the story of our impotent cyclone season. With the exception of Tropical Cyclone Debbie and Tropical Cyclone Ernie, everything else has been terribly weak and terribly sheared away, and this system, no different. Nevertheless, on the OCC Weather Centre, as we track this system through, you can see that whatever's left of the circulation as it hits the coast here around the North Kimberley or skims the coast around the North Kimberley could provide a fair amount of shower activity on the coast, uh, particularly here on the Western Australian side of the NTWA border. And it's a very unpopulated section of coastline here, but people in Kalambaru and uh, and and Kununurra, uh, probably, and Wyndham will probably welcome a little bit of moisture coming back into the region and some showers and maybe some storms in through the area. Mostly so for Wyndham and Kununurra, less so for Columbaroo. Now, the system is eventually expected to track off the coast uh, and continue tracking away to the west. And I think the interest lies for Broome as to how close to the coast it's going to go. If it gets, uh, if it gets fairly close to the coast, then Broome might see an increase in shower and storm activity as well when we get into the early part of the weekend or late on Friday. On the Euro model over the next 24 hours, you can see by tomorrow morning the Euro model is predicting the system to be on the North Kimberley coastline and bringing in a bit of moisture into this section of the coast and adjacent inland areas. Then as we go into Friday morning, located well and truly offshore here off the North Kimberley, nowhere near Broome, and so unfortunately the impacts on Broome are going to be very, very minimal. Maybe just some showers and storms building up on that beautiful little northeasterly humid airflow. Once the system moves off the WA coast, it is likely to sort of linger in place here around uh, off the Pilbara coastline for quite some time. Not expected to intensify. It looks as though there's going to be a lot of dry air to its west and to its north, but there is going to be a lot of moisture to its east. And so what will happen is as the system drifts in towards the coast probably on Sunday more likely Monday at this stage it will bring in a fair amount of rainfall and you can see winds getting up to about 15 to 25 knots here on the eastern semicircle of the system look the fact is folks is a weak low out there 
And while there's a weak low out there, there's always hope. But uh, it does appear as though the environmental conditions are going to be extremely unfavourable for the system. Look at the amount of vertical wind shear here as it approaches Port Hedland. 30 to 60 knots, depending on how close to Hedland it gets at the time. Uh, so we're looking here at the shear magnitude. That's just too much. No, I don't care. You can be a Cat 5. You can be the strongest cyclone on record. You're not going to survive that uh, for any more than about 12 to 18 hours. And you're certainly not going to survive it as a very weak low. And when you couple that with dry air as it approaches Port Hedland, uh, Karatha area, you can see the dry air on the western side of it, and it's only just marginally moist on the east. So we need this 70-80% marker right around the region of the cyclone or the low, and we're just not getting it. It's just, it's just a situation where it's just going to be too dry for the system. Over the next seven days, though, places in the Pilbara could be receiving some reasonable rainfall from showers and thunderstorms, particularly if the system comes in towards the coast as a weak low or trough. Uh, that will bring in, pump in some moisture or advect some moisture from Indonesia and through the Timor Sea into the region. So that's why we're getting a lot of greens, which suggests 25 to 50 millimetres are possible over the next seven days across parts of the state that are relatively dry. As I say, folks, we'll keep an eye on it just in case it does something silly over the next 24 hours. But let's shift our focus over to the far north of Queensland. A weak trough has developed in the Coral Sea. And what we can see using our radar, uh, satellite imagery, you can see that elongated line of disturbed weather. Uh, try something trying to get going here in the eastern Coral Sea. It won't. But uh, the idea here is that the trough system will move in a northwesterly direction up towards the tip of the peninsula and may increase some rainfall up there. Anywhere north of Cooktown, more likely north of Cape Melville at the moment. It just keeps going a little bit further north with each model run. So there's our trough system just in through there and you can see just on that southern edge that's where we're seeing the greatest amount of convection and from that system you can see it's tracking in a west to northwesterly direction tomorrow and then just sort of washes out but moves into the northern parts of the peninsula on Friday, Saturday morning and it may enhance some rainfall up here in the North Peninsula and the Northern Territory, northeastern coastline. So uh, that's an interesting feature into the future. We're watching a couple of other little weak circulations that could form up in the Solomon Sea, track across PNG, and maybe a nuisance up there in the Arafura Sea in the longer term. Look, we're pretty well into dry season mode now across most of the Coral Sea, so it would be very unusual now to see a tropical cyclone track in a southwesterly direction. If we do see any tropical cyclone activity in the back end of April, it's very likely to be located up here in the Solomon Sea, that's its genesis point, and very likely to track in an almost due west direction. As soon as it tries to move in a south, south or southwest direction, uh, it'll be sheared away, or an upper trough will take it away to the southeast. So there's very little chance now for the Queensland coast south of Cairns uh, to be receiving any uh, type of cyclonic activity at the back end of April. We've pretty well now moved right into a dry season pattern. So... Given the fact that that is the case, this may be the last time you'll hear from me this season in a video update. In saying that though, of course, we'll be keeping an eye open on this tropical low, particularly over the next 24 hours. It does have a small window there of some opportunity, but it, it's got a lot of work to do to even be a, uh, a reasonable low that could produce any weather for anyone at the moment. So it's got a long way to go. And as I say, in the long term for Port Hedland folk and maybe Karatha folk, it could, be, it could increase some shower activity. Keep an eye on this uh, little trough system as it tracks west. Nothing expected out of that. And uh, probably more importantly, just keeping an eye on these little circulations that might pop up in about uh, five to ten days out there in the Solomon Sea. They're very likely to track directly west and may be a little bit interesting for the Northern Territory uh, into the media, into the long term. But as I say, jury's still out about how close to the NT they'll get at the moment. They're not within 500 k's of the NT coastline. So uh, this should, if everything goes to plan, be my last update with you for season 2016-2017. If you enjoy our coverage of tropical cyclones and want to support us in doing what we do, uh, head over to ozcyclonechasers.com.au, click on the subscribe button, you get a hell of a lot more stuff and you get to hear my annoying voice for another 18 days before the end of the season anyway, and I'll keep you up to date through the dry season as well for any tropical shenanigans across the Australian region. Plus, you get access to computer model graphics, high-resolution radar, high-resolution satellite, more high-resolution stuff that you can't get anywhere else. And lightning data, all that stuff uh, is yours if you're a subscriber. $38.50 a year. And if you subscribe now, you're probably going to be covered for all of next cyclone season anyway. Have a great night. Don't talk to you again till...
next wet season. Take care.